The International Monetary Fund, IMF, released its latest World Economic Outlook report on January 31, 2023, revising global economic growth for 2023 upward to 2.9% from the 2.7% forecast in October 2022. China's economy has also been revised upward significantly to 5.2% from the 4.4% forecast in October last year. Bloomberg said this is the first time in a year that the IMF has raised its growth forecast for the global economy. The reason for the upward revision is the rebound in demand in the U.S. and Europe, as well as the improvement in China's outbreak of COVID-19. The report also claims that changes in China's outbreak control measures will boost global economic growth and that a weaker U.S. dollar offers a brighter outlook for emerging market countries with foreign debt. Economic growth in emerging markets in developing economies is expected to rise to 4.0% in 2023. However, local Chinese economists and professionals are far from being so optimistic. Li Chun, a Hong Kong correspondent of the Chinese media Economic Daily, wrote in his column, 2022 is doomed to be an unusual winter. 2023 may be even more dreadful. He listed several figures. In the first half of 2022, 460,000 enterprises closed down. 3.1 million self-employed accounts were dissolved. 240 listed companies were liquidated and 800 million people were in debt. These figures are in line with what is circulating on the Chinese web. It is written online that the probability of closure of brick-and-mortar stores has reached a staggering 93%. In mid-2022, a list of 2022 brick-and-mortar store demise was published. Some well-known brands such as Walmart, Louis Vuitton, and KFC were on the list. As of July 2022, 40,000 businesses, mainly micro and private enterprises, were closing down every day nationwide, and so on. Thus, the publisher and president of Wealth Magazine, a financial news media in Taiwan, wrote, All you are going to hear next is bad news. This is Dongguan. In the past year, after the week of Chinese New Year, this place should be open for work and there should be a lot of people. But this year, there are no people here. The streets are lined with factories and stores and this is a parking lot. There are not many people here now. This is the market. Many stores are not open. They would have been open before, but now they are off, and it's the same here. Here is the market square. Here is the parking lot. After walking around, 95% of the stores are still closed. Only one or two restaurants are open. Beverage stores are all gone. Some are replaced by barber shops. This will have an impact on the development of the city, the development of the business district indeed. Do you see what this Ginza has become? This time I don't even get to have a meal here, so I'll look for a different place. You must remember what the Ginza used to be when it was booming. How on earth has it come to this? Since July 2022, China has been in a crisis when the mortgage suspension wave began. This is despite the fact that since 2023, high-level meetings of the Communist Party have called on major developers to guarantee the delivery of residential buildings as a key economic priority. However, this crisis and alarm haven't gone away. Instead, it is coming to more and more average Chinese people. What's it like to have to pay back U.S. $4,886 a month on a mortgage in Nanjing? I'm 35 years old, currently living in Nanjing's Hexi district, and a mother of two. My main business is a beauty salon. Previously, the economic environment was relatively good, and I was in the right kind of business, the kind of business where a fool can make money. In 2017, I bought a school district home in Hexi district for my children's schooling, and in 2020, I bought a smaller three-bedroom home near the school district, which is the one I live in now. The mortgage payments on both apartments add up to U.S. $4,886 a month. When I first bought it, I was really excited. I was excited to be able to finally live apart for my in-laws. At the time of purchase, my income was relatively stable and high. In addition, I did well in my investment, so it wasn't very 
very stressful for me to repay the loan every month. But now the physical business is really becoming more difficult to run. Not only is the income unstable, but sometimes you need to subsidize it. Now that I think about it, I was too impulsive when I bought the home. I took out such a large loan. Even if I don't eat or drink every month, I have to pay back US $4,886 in time, and I have to do it for 30 years. The other day I did some math and found that only $1,229 of my payment was for principal and the rest of the $3,657 was interest. This number is terrifying. Late at night, when I think about it, I will be very anxious, with insomnia and feeling restless. Yesterday, my husband said he was going to look for a job. In the past few years, he operated a company Due to the bad economic environment, he was losing money every month, and he has lost almost US $150,000 so far. As the owner, he had to dissolve the company and look for a job. The company was losing money, and there is pressure on expenses every month. I'm also an ordinary working person, earning a few hundred US dollars a month with two children in school and a monthly mortgage payment of US $1,273, and the various living expenses. The pressure is really enormous, and we can hardly breathe. To others, we have a decent home and a car in Guangzhou, but what they don't know is that in order to save money, we send our two children to go to school in our hometown in Hunan province. The various expenses in our hometown are much less than those in Guangzhou, my husband said that unless we could earn 12,000 to 15,000 US dollars a month, we wouldn't be able to afford to send our children to school in Guangzhou. So the children would have to be left behind in our hometown. At this point, I suddenly feel like such a failure that I can't even look after my children and have them with me. Sometimes, I don't even know what I'm trying to do by working so hard. Who can tell us what we did wrong? We sold a home that we bought in Rongyang City. We're working in Zhengzhou City, renting an apartment and paying the mortgage on the apartment in Rongyang City. We couldn't live in our own home, and we have to pay the extra rent. But after looking around in the big city of Zhengzhou, we sadly realized that we can only afford a home in a small city. After going around, we bought another home in Rongyang City. But at this time, the home price wasn't the same as before, and the interest rate was also different. The interest rate went up 20% to 5.88%, and we had to pay US $150 more every month. We started to make the first payment in January 2022 and the tragedy started right then and there. The interest rate started to drop soon after, and now the interest rate is 4.1%. We feel we were so wrong that we gave up the apartment we bought in 2016. Now more than half a year later, the price of the property has dropped by US $22,000. Based on the interest rate of 30 years, we have to pay back $29,600 more in interest. Who can tell us what we should do? I really want to sell the apartment and return to the village. The home we are living in is a small county in Henan province. The economy of this county really can't sustain this year. When buying the home, my husband was still working with a stable income. With a monthly mortgage of US $450, we were still relatively confident. I didn't expect to have a second child just after I bought the home. At that time, I wasn't planning to have this baby, considering the financial pressure. But who would have thought it would be twins? So I was happy to have them. The result is one more pair of son and daughter. I thought we were still young and could cope with it if we worked hard. But I underestimated the irresistible factor of the three-year-long epidemic. My husband has been unemployed and not working for more than a year. For over a year, our family didn't have a single penny of income, with a mortgage payment of US $450 a month and three children to support. I am panicking and don't know what to do. The pressure is unprecedented, and I'm most afraid that the children will get sick. Now I can't sleep at night thinking about how to make money and how to make a lot of money. As soon as I think about living expenses, I can't wait to pack up and go back home to the countryside.
It's almost time to repay the mortgage. Now the pressure is really huge, and I don't know what to do next. Recently, the Chinese media China Business Network published a report with the headline. Many defaulted real estate companies issue new bonds. The list of those receiving financing support is getting longer. This headline also clearly shows the real estate crisis in China. We have done a number of episodes in the past on China's scam-like real estate economic development model. To summarize, the crisis facing China's real estate sector includes a vanishing demographic dividend, negative population growth, and an oversupply of properties. This entire county is full of residential buildings. Are there any buyers for all these homes? And what is the point of building so many? There are too many homes being built. Home prices are going down at a 50% discount, and some say that home prices will become cheap as cabbage prices. Our environment here in the county is still good. Now the home supply is greater than the demand, but certainly there are still people who will buy. The home price here is 450 to 600 U.S. dollars per square meter. It won't go any lower. If it goes down further, the developers will make no profit, but they have hired the construction team with high wages and high costs. Currently, China's real estate developers, home buying families, and local governments are all over indebted. People have no money in their pockets, and it is difficult to borrow money to buy homes. In addition, due to inflationary pressure, many private enterprises cannot afford to pay upstream manufacturers, leaving many rotten tail buildings. This crisis is now growing. Friends, I'm ready to stop my mortgage payments. My home has been on the market for nine months, and it hasn't sold, so I'm discouraged. I have three interested buyers, but all fell through because of the price. They kept squeezing the price, especially the last one, who kept trying to get a lower price that I had in mind. And when they found out, they quit buying. So I have decided to stop paying the mortgage and stop it for a few months. I'm unemployed at home now, and I'm a full-time mom. The father worked a half a month last month, and he couldn't sleep at night. Just thinking about paying the mortgage, I've been growing a lot of gray hair lately, here and there. I'm only 35 years old, and I've grown so much gray hair. The home I bought became rotten-tailed. In 2019, I bought a home in Xianghe, Hebei Province, on a whim. At that time, a square meter of residential property in Xianghe was about 1,480 U.S. dollars or more. The apartment I bought was both commercial and residential, and the price was about 1,184 U.S. dollars, with a total of 40 square meters for a total of 59,000 U.S. dollars. At that time, I thought it was a great deal. The developer was a major one, so I did. Suspected and paid the deposit on the day of the viewing and the full payment the next day. At that time, the sales office had created a very exciting atmosphere. A young man beside me said he was from Beijing and bought two units on the spot, one for himself and one for his parents. However, this project is becoming a rotten tail building. When I first heard this news, I was very depressed. It cost me fifty-nine thousand U.S. dollars, ah,、huh? all wasted now. I was really resentful. Later, I participated in several so-called negotiations with the developer, basically to no avail. Plus, I'm busy at work, and I started to accept the reality over time. In fact, over the past two years, there have been many people stuck in the situation like me. For some, the savings of three generations of the family have been thrown away in a concrete box. I have defaulted on my mortgage payments for more than a year now. This home has been seized by the court. I bought it in 2019 for 222,000 U.S. dollars, with 59,000 dollars down and 163,000 dollars in loans. The payment is 947 U.S. dollars per month. Last June, I was forced to stop making payments. At that time, I discovered that after two years, I still had 168,800 dollars left on my loan, and I had paid 24,000 dollars on loan and 19,200 dollars in interest. Six months later, I was sued in court. My home was seized, and my bank card was frozen. Even a few dollars on my WeChat account were frozen. Besides, there were hundreds of thousands of renminbi in fees, including penalties for breach of contract, legal fees, attorney fees, estate preservation fees, and so. 
so on. Two days ago, the court called me and informed me that the home would be auctioned off and the appraisal price was 189,500 US dollars, with the starting price set at 70% or about 133,200 US dollars. If my home was forced to be auctioned off, not only would I lose my home, but I would also lose the down payment. I would owe the bank 45,000 US dollars, plus the down payment of 59,000 US dollars, plus other expenses, so I would have lost a total of 133,000 US dollars. It is foreseeable that the local fiscal debt crisis, which is closely related to the real estate crisis, will be equally explosive in 2023. It will be concentrated on local special debt, urban investment companies, urban investment bonds, and the debt of even some small and medium-sized banks. The Chinese media reported that as of the end of November 2022, the nationwide local government debt balance exceeded 5 trillion US dollars. As for interest-bearing local urban investment bonds, which aren't counted as local government debt, but are in fact a form of local government debt, they stand at 8.3 trillion US dollars as of 2021. Including the new borrowing and interest in 2022, the total should now reach 8.9 trillion US dollars. Together, the two local debts are already up to 14 trillion US dollars. And according to the figure that the Chinese government has likely glossed over, China's total GDP in 2022 was just about 17.8 trillion US dollars. In other words, local debt plus urban investment debt accounted for 79% of the total GDP in 2022. In the private sector, we see that many companies are closing down, workers are losing jobs, and household debt is soaring. So in mid-January 2023, around the Chinese New Year, tons of weeping faces were seen on the Chinese internet, telling of the unprecedented pain that high debt has brought to their lives. <laughs> I'm in debt to the tune of US $1.63 million, and those in debt like me probably have trouble sleeping all night too. As a former outstanding businesswoman and the boss of a corporation, I have now become a loser that everyone despises. I feel deeply what it means to live a life that's worse than death, and what it means to spend every day like a year. Every waking moment, I'm thinking about how to pay back the money, my children's school fees and living expenses, where would they come from? I started to invest blindly in 2017. I never thought of the big environment and its impact on me which is simply beyond me. My projects are exploding all over the place. Bam, I was blown from the sky to the bottom. All my seven houses and all my cars were lost, and all my debts are overdue across the board. They say everyone should go home for the new year, whether they have money or not, but I don't have the chance to go home for the new year. For the first time in my life, I spent the new year alone. After three years of living with a mask, chip shortage, export disruptions, and rising raw material prices, in order to maintain the normal operation of my factory, I tried to tear down the east wall to mend the west wall. Finally, the factory closed down and I am 830,000 US dollars in debt. I sold everything I could and now I have nothing left. When I think of the expectant eyes of my elderly parents, I feel a pang in my heart. Other people have family reunions, but I'm in the middle of the tribulation. I used to drive luxury cars and be a boss, but now I'm on the streets. It's early in the morning and I can't sleep. I can't sleep at night. I'm also closing down my company and I'm in a particularly tough spot. I really can't stand it anymore. Every day many people are pressing me for money. You know what? I owe other people. People come to me every day to press me to pay. But I can't get any money back from those who owe me. I now owe 300,000 US dollars. With $300,000 in debt, do I still have any chance to recover? Since the debt exploded, I started to become lost and desperate. One after another, investment failure in projects has made me completely paralyzed. I was so desperate that I sold my beloved car and the home I had saved for my son's marriage. On the day I disposed of the car and the home, I washed the car clean and sat in it by myself for a full three hours. The pessimism, reluctance, inner struggle and despair that only people in debt can understand. My emotions went out of control when it came time to hand over the keys to the property to the buyer. My tears burst out of my eyes instantly. It's said that men don't cry easily, but it's just that they haven't reached the breaking point. 
being 244,000 US dollars in debt. It's scary. I'm just an average person. My debt revolved from home loans to online loans to credit cards. Then I realized I was playing with it like a snowball. And it keeps getting bigger and bigger, all the way up to $244,000. Wouldn't you say it's all like a joke? China's economy is facing many problems in 2023. First of all, China has more than 900 million people infected with the new coronavirus, excess deaths and after effects, as well as a blow to the medical system, which will have a serious impact on China's social stability and recovery of consumption power. Secondly, the tightening of U.S. monetary policy is not conducive to China's export demand. And thirdly, and most importantly, China's policies are volatile. During the epidemic, cities were closed for a while and then suddenly opened up. The government lied flat and did nothing. In addition, in the past, it shouted the slogan of common prosperity, cracking down on the platform economy, education and training industry, and real estate. But now it has changed its mind. Policy uncertainty has been the greatest risk for investors. Moreover, in 2023, after the National People's Congress in March, Li Qiang, the designated premier in Xi Jinping's administration, will officially take office. It is widely believed that this new premier doesn't understand the economy, the overall economic macro-management, and policy management compared to previous Chinese premiers. As such, it has increased the uncertainty of China's economy and made it difficult for business investment to resume. From what is known so far, the Chinese authorities' measures to develop the economy in 2023 are to boost consumption while emphasizing investment. The biggest problem with boosting consumption is that the Chinese people will hold onto their wallets even more because of the economic downturn. According to data released by the Central Bank of China on January 11, 2023, the increase in resident deposits in China in 2022 was 2.64 trillion US dollars. Comparing the increase in deposits over the past four years, we can see that 2.64 trillion US dollars is a surge in the sector. In 2021, the increase was 1.47 trillion US dollars. In 2020, 1.67 trillion US dollars. In 2019, it was 1.44 trillion US dollars. And in 2018, it was even lower with only 1.07 trillion US dollars. Looking at investment, in 2023, the communist authorities can certainly counter the international trend by raising the fiscal deficit, issuing large-scale local special bonds, and continuing to introduce financial policies to support infrastructure. Still, their impact and strength would be rather limited. This is because it would contradict the prevention and control of the increasing debt and financial risk. In addition to the constraints of the debt crisis, investment would no longer be the main driver of China's economic growth because of two other factors. First, China's rapid industrialization is over. Second, China's rapid urbanization is over. Some economists have clearly pointed out that if the expansion is continued through artificial investment, it may neither form the production capacity nor the capacity to provide real public services. It will also cause a huge waste of labor, material, and financial resources. Furthermore, how significant will the impact of the 2023 outbreak really be? The CCP is betting that the entire population will be infected with the virus and develop herd immunity to make it through. However, the current round of the outbreak has already caused a massive amount of death, and the outlook is unpredictable and bleak. What would the situation be if it went against the CCP's expectations?